Hello everyone, today I am going to discuss a very important CT scan. This is the kind of CT scan that you usually see in the emergency department after a trauma case. It is very important to recognize the features in this because it is very dangerous for the person if you delay the treatment, let alone the identification of this very important finding on the CT scan. So we are going to discuss this and the signs and symptoms that the patient is going to present with in trauma and what are the different causes. The first question was, what do you see? So you see a CT scan of the brain. This is a plain CT scan, which means that there was no contrast given to the patient. A contrast is basically a dye and you give that dye, it is um, a different color and that color actually enhances the contrast between the blood and the surrounding soft tissue and the bone. So it is usually given when you want to see blood vessels and it has different indications which we're going to discuss in another video but for now you do CT scan brain plain when you want to see any obvious hematomas which is a collection of blood, any uh, mass deviation which means any prominent deviation of the soft tissue because of effect of a tumor or because of any internal bleeding. You can also see different fractures, uh, minor and even major ones. So that is usually when we prefer a CT brain plane. The second important thing is the view. This is an axial view which means it has been taken from the top and it is along the axis of the skull which means that if you put a point in the middle, for example, if this is a skull and excuse my drawing, but anyways, uh, if this is a skull and you put a point in the middle of the skull right here. So it is going to divide the skull into equal parts from every direction within 360 degrees so it is the cut section of the skull from the top which means you're just going to be looking from the top and in a CT scan you see different cut sections so we will see different cut sections from the top it is a top view you can refer to the previous image again or you can look up different views of the skull but that is also another topic for another day the last point says fracture of floor of the orbit, inferior wall of the orbit. And this is the main finding in the CT scan. You need to have a good understanding of the anatomy of the orbit. And we are going to look at the anatomy of the orbit to understand this with the help of this image. So you can see that this is the orbit. This is the right orbit. And the orbit has different walls just like the walls of a room so you have a roof or the superior wall in a room this is going to be the roof of the orbit then you have a floor in a room this is going to be the floor of the orbit or the inferior wall then you have different walls on either side the orbit is open in the front so we do not have any wall in the front the orbit is close towards the back because of the presence of different bony structures. This is the back of the orbit. Next we can see the medial wall of the orbit that is towards the middle or towards the nose and the lateral wall of the orbit. In this video our main focus is going to be on the inferior wall of the orbit and over here you can see that different bones have been marked by different colors. Let us go ahead and mark the territory of zygomatic bone with pink color. So as you can see that the zygomatic bone has a marked territory with the color orange. So let me just make it more prominent. This is the territory of the zygomatic bone. And now we are going to mark the territory of the maxillary bone. This is the territory of the maxillary bone. There is some part of the palatine bone as well, but we are going to focus on the main part of the maxillary and the zygomatic bone. The inferior wall of the orbit or the floor is now prominent, as you can see. 
and now you are able to understand better how the inferior wall of the orbit is formed by two bones because you can see that the maxillary bone and the zygomatic bone border the inferior part so this is a very important thing if you do not know the anatomy of the orbit you will not be able to figure out the same structures on the ct scan and if you do not know which structures are damaged you will not be able to pick up the signs and symptoms accordingly when the patient presents to you we are going to study about the signs and symptoms in correlation with the structure damaged in the next slide let us now look at the ct scan that we were looking at previously and let us compare it with this image so over here you can see this structure right here in which you see that there is a break on the right side of the skull is actually the inferior wall that we were talking about over here when you have to notice a fracture what you do is you look for continuity so if you start tracing the bone from here you can see that there is a continuity there is no disruption within the structure which means that there is no fracture but in this case if you start from here you see that there is a discontinuity this is an indication of a fracture and over here this is a fracture of the inferior wall of the orbit what happens is that when there is a fracture of the inferior wall blood starts to seep through the inferior wall so it goes down through this inferior wall and it tends to collect within the sinuses over here underneath this part you have the maxillary sinus right so this is the maxillary sinus this is basically the territory of the maxillary sinus right below the orbit so what happens is when the blood starts to seep over there the air within the maxillary sinus will come on the top as you know that the density of the air is less when compared to water or blood or any other fluid so the air tends to accumulate within the top and any kind of fluid is going to settle at the bottom so when we look from above the axial view of the ct scan we will see this thing what we see over here is that the blood and the fluid has settled and the air has accumulated on the top naturally there is some mucus which is basically um, thickening of the secretions when the secretions are thickened they're known as mucus so you can see that normally there is some mucus present within the sinuses and the rest of it has air in it this is the normal appearance but when you see that there is a disruption in the bony structure the air fluid level is visible and the fluid level has risen as compared to what it normally is that is an indication that there has been a breach there has been a fracture and the blood is accumulating within the sinuses let us now look at another picture right here and this is going to tell us better what is happening so now you see that in this picture they are telling us about fracture of the lateral wall and fracture of the inferior wall so basically this is the territory of the sinuses over here you have both of your sinuses which are fluid and air filled cavities and now you know that whenever there is a fracture in the inferior wall everything is just going to simply drop down right the next question was what are the signs and symptoms so the first sign is going to be an ophthalmos an ophthalmos is when the eye appears smaller than it actually is why does the eye suddenly appear smaller let us look at it in another view now over here we can see that the right eye appears bigger as compared to the left eye and in the ct scan in a different kind of view not the axial view and this is the ct of the face not the brain you can actually see that there is a continuity in the inferior wall the lateral wall superior wall or roof and in the medial wall of the orbit whereas on the left side you see that there is a continuity in the superior wall the medial wall lateral wall but not in the inferior wall
if you're unsure you can always compare the right and the left side because the good thing is that god has made us in such a way that both of the sides they are symmetrical to each other except for some soft issues for example the female breasts can be asymmetrical at times but when we talk about the bony structures they are symmetrical so you can compare one side to another side if you're unsure and if i compare this side of the orbit with the other side i see that there is some irregularity in the shape I also see that over here the maxillary sinus is of a particular shape and over here the maxillary sinus seems to have shrunken. So there is something wrong going on the left side, right? And similarly, you can see that the right eye appears larger as compared to the left eye of the person. Now, this is very interesting. What actually happens is that whenever there is a fracture in the inferior wall, all of the contents of the eye, they tend to sag towards the maxillary sinus because of gravity. So the muscle, the fat and even the eyeball, it tends to slightly drop. And that gives us an illusion of the eye being smaller as compared to the normal eye. And this is an important finding that you are going to see on examination whenever the patient comes to you with a history of trauma. And here I have revealed one of the most important causes of this fracture as well. The second point is ecchymosis or bruising. So it is very natural that whenever there is trauma, that is the soft tissues are injured, some of the blood is going to leak or seep into the surrounding area and that is going to make a bruise, which is a certain kind of discoloration on the skin. The third point is diplopia. Diplopia means double vision and this is related to the fourth point, unable to look up. So this is what you will find on examination apart from in ophthalmos. And the, you're going to ask the patient to look upwards, but they will not be able to do so. Diplopia means blurring of vision and blurring of vision is also related to the main phenomenon that is behind uh, the patient not being able to look up. So let us now look at another image first. Over here, we can see that there is a breach in the inferior wall and the fatty content is leaking and is going towards the maxillary sinus. And so is the eyeball. The eyeball is not at the same level as the normal eyeball. Naturally, it is also going to be dropping. Now, what happens is that whenever there is fracture of the inferior wall, some of the muscles that are attached to the inferior surface, like we have the inferior rectus over here, it is going to impinge or you can say it is going to be obstructed or come between the fractured bony fragments. So when it is coming between the fractured bony fragments, it is going to be stuck over there. Since the muscle is attached to the orbit, as you can see here, if I label it. So this is the inferior rectus muscle. Can you see this one? Over here, we have superior rectus, then medial rectus, and then lateral rectus, the small pink structure that you can see. So the inferior rectus is attached to the eyeball. And when it is going to be stuck within the fragment of the bony um, orbit, it is going to also pull the eyeball with it. So if you ask the patient to look upwards, they will not be able to look upwards because the inferior muscle is still stuck. It is just the same as, for example, if you're walking on the floor and there is a bubble gum on the floor and you put your foot on that bubble gum by any chance. So your shoe is going to be stuck to that bubble gum, which is going to serve as an anchor or as a point of connection between the floor and your foot. And if you try to lift your foot up, you will have to put in some kind of pressure and it will be difficult for you. So when the eyeball has to um, exert some of its energy to look upwards, we will not be able to see clearly because now one eyeball is not exerting the same pressure. It is able to move in all directions normally, which is the normal eyeball, in this case, the right one. And the left eyeball is stuck. So the image that is created because of the light going into the eye and reflecting from the retina is not going to be overlapping. 
and that leads to blurring of the vision the patient is going to tell you that they are seeing two things at once or they are seeing hazy images so that is very important and like i always say everything is related to the basics if you do not know about the anatomy which means if you do not know about the structure of the eyeball the muscles that are attached to the eyeball what are the movements of those muscles you will not be able to discern what the patient is saying or what their complaint is and why they are telling you about that specific complaint so these were the main signs and symptoms uh, in ophthalmos that is the eye appears smaller the patient is not able to look upwards and then uh, ecchymosis or bruising which is a very common feature and diplopia the next question was causes of this fracture or the causes of the finding that you see so the most common cause is trauma and when you are asked in the exam you're not going to write trauma you are going to write blunt force so the important thing over here is that there are different injuries of the eye there are penetrating injuries there are blunt injuries and many other injuries the most common ones are the blunt and the penetrating injuries so penetrating injury is when something goes inside your eye and if something is penetrating or going inside the eyeball it is going to burst it is not going to sag downwards whereas whenever there is a blunt force that hits the orbit and the eyeball both that is going to lead to fracture of the inferior wall and then the eyeball is going to sag so whenever there is a question that asks you the most common cause of fracture of the inferior wall of the orbit you are going to write blunt force not penetrating injury they seem like they're the same thing but it makes a huge difference when you look into the detail now let us look at another image over here we can see that this is the inferior orbital wall fracture and it says inferior orbital wall fracture with entrapped inferior rectus muscle this is exactly what we talked about over here they are again uh, trying to explain what the entrapped inferior rectus muscle looks like so you can see if you ask the patient to look upwards when they try to look upwards the normal eye is going to be pointing towards the direction you ask them to in this case it's looking upwards but the affected eye is not able to look upwards because the inferior rectus muscle is entrapped this is the area of entrapment and you can also see some bruising over here the ecchymosis of bruising we talked about earlier this is a ct scan image and over here we see another finding um in fact it is the same finding with another name so it says teardrop sign herniated tissue and muscle in free orbital ball fracture so sometimes you see a very typical bookish picture in the form of a teardrop when part of the tissue it leaks out of that uh, small point of fracture if i trace it we can make it out over here that it looks like a teardrop this was all about this topic if there is something that you did not understand something that you want to add um or an interesting case that you saw regarding fractures of the orbit please feel free to mention it in the comment section below and yeah thank you so much for watching have a great day